Amen? Also, uh, every purchase that happens like in the bookstore, shirt, book, because we know the kids are going back to school and stuff, you get a free kid's shirt. So there's shirts over there for the kids. So every purchase, any purchase that you make, uh, the kids get shirts. Amen? And so, um, you know, I was, this message, I was kind of thinking about this message, and I thought about Superman. You know, because uh, I think, like, a lot of times we watch Superman, I don't know, at least for me, I like the old Clark Kent. You know what I mean? I know, nothing against, you know, the new Supermans, but, you know, the old Clark Kent, you know what I'm saying? He's Superman. When the original person got in a wheelchair, I was like, Superman. Because I was so caught up in him being Superman. But something that's interesting about Superman is that Superman, you see him in all the movies, he swoops. And he saves either the girl, well, either he saved the guy from the fire. You know, there's always something on fire. And, and when he's, he either saves him or he picks up the chick from the balcony. And every time he picks her up or he saves the person from the fire, the first thing that happens is they, you know, he has them right here. Right? And what's the first thing they do? They start freaking out. And I started thinking about that. I was like, how are you freaking out? You saw the dude fly. <laughs> he, like, it's almost, it, he landed there, picked you up, and then took you on a ride. Like, if he, if he flew there and picked you up, he ain't dropping you. He ain't dropping you. What, he forgot how to fly? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he midair and go, oops. Superman thing ain't working right now. Nah. But, you know, the crazy part is that we do the same thing with God. You see, some of us have trusted the Lord to keep us from the fire, but we're not sure he can bring us to safety home. We believe in him for eternity, but we just don't have much confidence that he can take care of the fires in our lives. We know he will take us to heaven. We're just not sure if he got our back on earth. He got us out of hell, but we're not sure he can handle his story. See, if you identify with any of those statements today, then this sermon is for you. And I started thinking about, you know, obviously, you know, and then uh, Pastor Megan handed me, you know, a Tony Evans book, and I've just kind of been all in the Tony Evans name stuff, and it's just, like, mind-boggling. But it just reminds me of a lot of things. And I was like, I couldn't, I was going to do Jehovah uh, Zyra, but I felt like we have a earthly human understanding on what we see as provision and so then we get real frustrated when he ain't human and we start chasing our wants rather than our needs and in order for you to understand Jehovah Jireh you have to understand Jehovah Rohi you have to understand that he's a shepherd so that you could understand what he does to, for the sheep so that you could understand how he brings provision in your life. Are you with me? And so we're going to turn to Psalms 23 and we're going to learn about our good shepherd. And then a little bit uh, later, we're going to go to Genesis 22 and we're going to see where Abraham, where, where he called him Jireh. Amen. This is so good, y'all. I, I don't know. I preach myself giddy. I, I, it's like 80 things. I, I just keep looking at the message, and I just keep thinking about the goodness of God. So we got Psalms 23, 1 through 6. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Everybody say, the Lord, the Lord is, my is my shepherd. shepherd. I mean, get a little selfish with it. You going to say, the Lord is my shepherd. He is all our shepherds, but I live my life off of a personal relationship, so he's my shepherd. I think that's like an important thing to stick in your pocket or hide in your heart. It says, I shall not want. Think about it. His following words are, I shall not want, because he knows that the Lord is his shepherd. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, this is so good. Even though I walk now, every time I read this, I think of, uh, I forgot, Dangerous Minds, I think the movie. Y'all are going to, I saw, I see Coolio, like in my head. 
But, you know, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I realize, no, I'm joking, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> oh, my God. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love. And loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on, he's your faithful shepherd who will protect and guide you. He'll help you trust that he'll provide for your physical and your spiritual needs. So to understand the shepherd Jehovah Rohi, you got to realize that we are sheep. Now, I don't want to call you this or us this because I think sometimes, you know, we complain. I was telling you this morning. I go, we complain so much about our kids and all that. But I wonder if God started speaking to you and your child when you speak to your child. And I wonder if you fit some of the same things that your teenager and your kids do. Because we start thinking, we start thinking we're real smart. And then that's when it becomes a problem. See, because sheep are dumb. Sheep are dumb. If one of them walks in a circle and he's going nowhere, the rest of the sheep follow until they all fall over with exhaustion. Yeah, I don't care how much you've prospered, you're still sheep. And you can't forget that. Because, I, you know, I get it. I, I've been there, right? You start thinking, well, I got this now. And God's like, did you forget that you didn't have anything? You weren't there. Your marriage was jacked. All of these things were jacked. And I am who I am brought you out of whatever that was. If shepherd doesn't lead his sheep, they'll start walking aimlessly and get into trouble. Pastor Megan told me this past week that she read a thing where the sheep will just jump off a cliff. They'll just walk right off the cliff. Sounds like us. I mean, you thought your way was right until you saw a cliff. It was too late. And then you were hoping that some grabs you or that the fall ain't that far. I know right now you're in church. You're like, well, things, maybe some people are going through some stuff. But you're like, you know, things aren't that bad. But remember the time when they were? And you were like, how? Well, that was your best idea. That was like, you thought that was a good one. Sheep are defenseless. They can't defend themselves. They have no way to defend themselves against an attack of the wolves. Sheep are dirty. Dirty. They can't clean themselves. If a shepherd doesn't clean the sheep, they will start to smell and get sick. Isn't that wild? Because we know that we're washed in the word. And really that's what gets us cleansed. And I know that last week I talked about perspective. It not just being what you see, but how you view what you see. And that's where you start healing in your soul. It's because the shepherd's guidance will take you into places that you have no clue where he's taking you. Sheep are totally dependent. Come on, they're totally dependent, man. Sheep need shepherd's wisdom to keep, uh, to help them find food and water, guidance and provision. If not, the sheep will die of starvation. Think about it. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 6, that all of us are like sheep that have gone astray, and each of us have turned to his own way. Come on, we would live aimless lives, be prone to attack. We'd be stuck in our sin. We'd have no hope. But thankfully, we have a good shepherd named Jesus. John 10, 11 through 13, I want to read this to you. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep the hired hand since he is not the shepherd doesn't own the sheep 
leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters them. This happens because he's a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. You know, I was thinking about that. Because, you know, we have an incredible pastoral staff here. and I, I, I know, I know who they are. And, uh, and just leaders and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's amazing, right? Because sometimes if, if you are following your shepherd, you're following Jesus, then, I mean, and I, listen, hear me, hear me. Just because people have uh, misrepresented or done things wrong doesn't mean that this still isn't right. You with me? Don't get it twisted because I know like, ah, oh, it's almost like we, we take what little C does, one church or one person, and then we kind of put it big C. <laughs> These are all the pastors. Are. These are all the church. We, you know, no grace, no mer- Like, you know, it's just nothing. Like everybody wants grace, but nobody wants to extend grace. Everybody wants mercy, but nobody wants to extend mercy. And, so, and I know like right there I was looking, I said, man, a good shepherd will come and tell you like, hey, you tripping right now. It don't matter. Because remember, maturity ain't how old you are. A good sign of maturity is how you control your tongue. It says it in James. How you control your tongue, how your emotions are. If you're still throwing tantrums, you ain't as mature as you think you are. That was the heavens giving me a confirmation. (laughs) You got to trust that Jehovah Jireh shepherds his sheep. Come on. You see that? He cares for us individually in each and every situation. You see David call the Lord his shepherd. He used a present tense verb. He said, my shepherd. He didn't say the shepherd of the flock. He said, my shepherd. And I think that's so important because I think that sometimes we just forget. We forget. We do what we, hey, we let him guide us when we're in trouble sometimes. But let's say once you know Jesus, you let him guide you when you're in trouble. But then you're like, I got it. Hey, you was reading your word. Come on, you were serving. And I, I know things shift. But you should still have some basic things that you continually do. They don't, that doesn't change. The foundational stuff. Come on, he meets all the needs of the sheep. David proclaimed that because God was his shepherd, David would not be in want. He wouldn't have any unmet needs. So to understand that, you got to understand that it's usually food, shelter, and clothing. I think, look, when, when you understand that he's your shepherd, that he guides you, that he keeps you, that he leads you, that he provides every need, food, shelter, and clothing, you shouldn't have a worry. I think when we start getting into like looking at all the social media and looking at what this person got and that person got, and then we like confuse it. You know, it's funny because Elder Vinny was kind of sharing a little bit on Friday and he was just talking about stuff we did. And it's wild when I talk to people because I hear their heart and what they want. Hear me, what they want. And then my story is not like that. I didn't write like I, somebody had to tell me that I needed a house. I know that sounds. I just lived in an apartment my whole life. I'm good. I'm good. All that mattered to me were souls to reach the lost at any cost. That was our little sayings. That's it. And then you get through these whirlwinds because you you know you listen to a lot of people and some are good, some are not, some don't mean no no bad intentions. But you start going and it starts becoming about other things. This is, we, if, if he's Jehovah, he's Yahweh, and he's Adonai, then it all belongs to him, and you trust him to provide your needs. You're tripping because he's not giving you your wants. But when you know you have all your needs, you lack nothing. And, I, and most of the time, it's spiritual things with God, right? Because we, we get so natural-minded on what we could see that we think that his provision is always, like, something physical but even if he gave you something physical it would be to teach you something spiritual come on he meets your spiritual needs and he gives you peace 
That's what, that's what this whole thing is supposed to be about. You get your physical, but to teach you the spiritual, and in the spiritual, you are content whether you have it or not. Having it is cool, but when you're content and you have it, you share it. Some of us are in the mess that we're in because we are in the mess that we are in. Some of us are in the mess that we're in because we're in, we are in the mess that we are in. If you get out and you let him in, he'll turn that whole thing around. But that is the part of knowing that he is your shepherd. Come on. That he'll give you peace, that he'll restore, that he'll give you stability. Come on, when he goes by still waters, when he goes by still waters, think about it. Sheep aren't sure-footed, man. They, they sink, they'll drown. Hear this. Your busyness is what's getting you, dr- it's, it's, it's causing drowning. We, we always think about it, man. It, it's funny. Like, God, you know, we're so, and I've been there. I've been that guy. Sometimes it's a fear. Sometimes it's insecurity. You don't know how to turn off. But he's always talking about be still. I'm going to lay you down. It's going to be quiet. We start. I don't know. Huh? Because somehow we've equated to if we ain't moving, then God's not in it. Ooh, by, by still water. So you could drink. We try to drink like this. We moving, constantly moving, constantly moving, trying to drink. There ain't no way you're going to sit still and hear God when you're moving. Prison was the best thing that happened to me this last time, not the other times. I just sat still. (laughs) You got to believe that God guides you in ways that will give him glory. See, the problem with us is that we keep taking the wrong route and we get disoriented. We, We get so, we're moving so fast everything's moving fast right if I don't get it now I ain't never gonna get it and I'm not talking about hard work I understand there's hard work I I get all that but when that starts affecting your relationship with God problem and it's to give him glory I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like man I'm just in this situation you know like like I might be homeless I said maybe that's what you need No. It might turn you around. I said, well, let's talk first about how you got there. Well, prideful, arrogant, didn't want to listen, right? Okay. I was like, so now you're in this thing. And you're hoping that you get out. Or he teaches you what he wanted you to learn in your homelessness. And then he give you a house later. And he's like, because he didn't promise that. He just probably, look, he's going to feed you. He's going to give you clothing. And he'll put a roof over your head even if it's a cardboard box. But we don't like stuff like that. You know how many times? Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, we used to call them uh, abandoniums. So you break out of prison. You know when you break out. When you get out of prison. <laughs> Lord. You get out of prison. And all of a sudden, you know, you ain't got nothing. And so you break into an abandoned building and go to the top floor, abandoned And you start to think things. But at that time, I didn't have the word. So my uh, ambition, some of us have godly ambition. What's that? Well, man, I, we're going to save the planet. He's like, yo, save your house. We're going, God's giving me this ministry, and I got to do it. And it's like, cool, 
But when then I talk to your wife, you don't even go on date nights. I'm thinking like, nah, you ain't going to reach nothing. You're just going to. Ooh, that'll get frustrating after a while because then you feel like God's promise ain't being fulfilled. He's trying to deal with that little pride you got. So, Randa, you're like, I'm not going to. Fine. <laughs> you got to trust that your shepherd will protect you and take away all your fear. He meets, he, he meets the need for our security. What is that? I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm insecure. That's the beauty. I, I could have so many insecurities. Like, it's funny because my wife thinks, well, because you speak up there. You, you just, you just want to speak everywhere, and you're good. I'm like, you're tripping out. If you actually think because I have a personality that I just want to go stand in front of everybody and always talk. No. That's why I struggle with, like, live stream and all that. Think about it. How many do I do? Not many. I'm like, <gasps> I just know it brings all the foolish people out and gets in the comments, and I just don't want to deal with it. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to deal with that every day. And I just have insecurities. Am I going to say the right word? Am I going to? The only thing that pushes me is Jesus. Is he guides me. He's like, yo, this is what you're going to do. And by now, I'm surrendered. So I'm like, all right, cool. I don't want to, but I'll do it. And then I try to give it my all because I don't know how not to. Genesis 22, 9, 14, uh, 9 through 14, it says, They came to the place where God had told him, and Abraham built the altar, and they were arranged the wood, and the, bound his son Isaac, and laid him on the altar on the top of wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Because God, remember Jehovah, he will be whatever you need him to be in your present time of need. Not in your present time of want. In your present time of need, he'll supply all your needs. He said, do not, do not stretch your hand out against the lad and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear the Lord. So everything is about, do you have reverence? Do you fear the Lord? Do you respect him? And since you have not withheld your son, your only son, the thing that he had promised and the thing that he had, right? Because sometimes we get confused. He blesses us with things, and when he wants that back, we get bent out of shape. You know what that means? That you have now traded in the blessing over the blesser. Then Abraham raised his eyes, looked and behold, uh, behind him a ram caught in the thicket. Abraham went, took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. It is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Remember, he's, we said he's your shepherd. The word Jireh means to see. The word Jireh means to see. Now, the word Jireh can be translated to provide. Let me show you something. Uh, the relationship between the root word to see and, translation, and the translation to provide. Here it is. Two uh, meanings together is provision. Provision. Vision means to see, but provision means to see beforehand. God sees our need even before we see it. Even before we see it. The only way to experience God's provision is by obeying Him when He tests us. Abraham trusted. You know, I, I read it and I see it. He trusted that God would fulfill his promise, that he would build a nation through Isaac. It's wild because he's already like, yo, Sarah, you know, all these impossibilities are happening, and now he's asking for it. I can give this back to him because it is like a, I feel like it's a picture of what's to come. I feel like it's Jesus. He knew he could resurrect them. If he got a baby at that age, he knew he could resurrect them. Isn't that wild? And everything was about a test in his heart. And I feel like a lot of us, we're holding on to whatever that Isaac is. You got to believe that God has a plan even when it does not make sense. You know, I was watching this, this message by Jake's that I'm kind of like, 
now I'm just chewing on that thing because it, it just started connecting things that I feel that God has placed in my heart. But one of the things that was powerful, y'all have heard me preach on the limbic system, which is kind of like the heart, right? It's that place, your fight or flight, all of that. But he's talking about uh, uh, when, when somebody recognizes someone and he went and broke down the word recognition or cognitive which is kind of when you see something, oh, Jesus. It's kind of like when you see something that um, when you're cognitive of something, I see James. Hey, what's up, James? I meet James. I see his blue shirt, and there's a picture that stays there that literally lets me know when somebody says, hey, do you know James? For me, I'm really bad with names. Ruthie's champion at it. I got to literally put the name with like something. Are you with me? Like, like Josue, I don't know where he's at. He's probably doing media somewhere. He is, until I got to like know him, know him, he was Josue the plumber. <laughs> and the more I knew the plumber, the more I knew Josue. Because cognitively, in order for me to recognize him, I had to have a mental picture of what I've seen. It comes back to memory. This is why a lot of us are still in our past because we have a picture. When God is trying to show you something new, you can't see it because you're too busy with what you can see. Oh, I wish I had those. I, oh. Thank you. you're going or trying to change something you can't because you, it will always revert you back to what you know that's how you stay stuck year after year well I don't know why I can't be that's because you still view it a certain way I had to learn how to be everything Like, I ain't telling you this because, you know, I heard the message and like, no, it hit me because it's like, yo, okay, that's my life. I, I can preach that. Because if I went off of my cognitive, I would still not be the dad I am today. I wouldn't be a pastor. I wouldn't be any of those things. Because I would still have a view to what I know. So I have to crucify what I know in order to learn what I need to know. You, you and him... It's I no longer live, Christ who lives in me. When he, he didn't know, he didn't know how it was going to come. You understand? He didn't know he was being tested. He's going off of something spiritual hoping that it manifests. He ain't even seen Jesus resurrect. It was a spiritual thing. He knew, like, he gave me this kid. He gave me this. So this, no matter what it looks like, has to, if, 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 he, if he dies, then it comes better. The, it stays alive. It just don't look like what you think it would look like. Because if it did, you would have done it. You're an angry person. And your excuse is, well, you're just the way I am. I'm always angry. I'm always angry. You need somebody to tell you, yo, you were angry, dude. For everything. It's either your pride or it's still about you. No, it's not. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. We, we. 
when we, when you're walking in faith, it's not cognitive. Now, I'll tell you what, once you walk something out, it's the new. So now you could go off of cognitive. How do you know? Because right after that, he builds an altar. Why? So every time he walks by that mountain, he goes, I remember, I remember. If he did it once, he'll do it again. And so you live like that for a little while until he wants to do it again differently than what he did it last time. Because then you wind up and you can you not see? <laughs> God be just tripping me out because everything is about maturing you. When he guides you, you got to be okay with going through things you don't understand. Trust me, listen. Most of the things that I knew before that I was trying to bring into Jesus when I used to be like, tell Ruthie, like, you punking me? That was street stuff. That had nothing to do with this. So I'm telling you, some of y'all still, you get upset the way you get upset because of your past that is actually your present. And when God is, you know, everybody knows the verses, right? God is ordering my steps. Okay. So then, if that's true, and I was trying to get across the room, I can't go here. Because let me tell you the difference between knowing scripture and living it out. God is ordering my steps. Then you're here and you're upset. I can't believe God. No, you don't. You, you ain't living out the scripture. You should be good with that step. Hey, you worried about step five. He's trying to deal with you on step one. And if something is repetitive in your life, like, come on, the people that know you good, ask them. Say, hey, am I like this? And then let them have it. Not from a hurtful place, but so that maybe they could see, like, man, I really am like that. And then you put that and kill it. Where's my worship team? You know what's crazy? I used to tell Ruthie, I think I told Pastor Greg this the other day. You know, in the beginning, when I first started walking it out, things got so good. Like, like internally, listen, <laughs> for those that <laughs> remember, I mean, my haircut was jacked, everything. Like, but, but those that remember me, I was still this happy. I was still this happy. I was excited. My wife was like tripping out on her little car, really happy. Everybody was happy. We were happy. We were just happy. We had the joy of the Lord. Y'all remember? I mean, excited. We're like, yeah. Any little thing. I remember when I pulled up, Vinny was telling me the story. I pulled up and I opened the trunk and we had four shirts. And we're like, we're going to sell shirts one day. And I was like, yo, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one, but don't tell nobody because I got three left. <laughs> I got to at least, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't tell nobody. <laughs> and so today we get to give a bunch of shirts to kids with and stuff. You get what I'm saying? But I remember my insecurity, man. See, because most of my life, when something happened good, you know, something horrific would happen. Where I would equate it as good, right? Like I would get locked up again. And I would lose everything. Or I would try to do something. And everything would just turn sour. Every single time. So here I get saved. My cognitive, what I recognized, was that if something got good, I was waiting for the moment that it was going to get bad. Some of y'all like that in your relationships right now. 
you with me? So, so things started getting good, and I was like, oh, I would, I would, I would, I would sit, sometimes kneel, and I would be like, all right, God, just tell me when this is all going to end. Like, when am I going to show up on Sunday and nobody's going to be there? And when, am I, when is this, when is this end? I used to have those thoughts every single time. For a long time. Super insecure. Insecurities were haunting me. I had anxiety of the uncertain. I don't know if I'm going to live. So you get uncertain and anxiety. I don't know if this is going to last. What's my life going to end up like? I don't know. What's, shouldn't the question be like, today? That's the Holy Spirit. You don't have any events on your calendar. I'm just saying. Use it as a prop if you need to. Hey, hey you know, when phones are, you know, get... And this is what I want to do. Everyone on your feet. I want you to allow the Holy Spirit. You know, I have some pastors ready. If they feel led to pray for someone. If not, I, I just want, while they're singing, I want you to honestly, listen, there might be an Isaac. You don't want to let that joker go, man. God, God blessed you with something, you know. And you're like, ah, you're so holding on to it, man. Stop holding on to your, what you think is good. God's got something better. gospel. Hey, responding to the word. So good. Is he your shepherd? If he's your shepherd, he'll provide. If not, you wind up in your own strength. You wind up doing all kinds of stuff. Frustrated life. It's kind of wild. Mm -hmm. I chased the added things my whole entire life. It's kind of crazy how it works. I always trip out. My whole entire life, the added things, the things, the world, my whole life. The minute I stop, I wind up obtaining them. Ain't that weird? Like effortlessly, too. Like, it's kind of crazy. The more I sought the kingdom, it gave me, beyond material things, a peace that surpasses the understanding of man. I have my moments, but I know where to go to because I have a shepherd. Amen. So they're going to start singing. And if this message is at all, maybe you're at a place where you feel like you lack. I just want you to meet me right here in the front. Ready? Go. Yep. Come on, the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart. You don't have to be ashamed. Come on. Mentally, woo, it's, it's whooping you. Mental stress. And you know, this is what we're going to do. There's probably a thought that you've, that you've had a view of a thought. We're going to put that on the altar. We're going to sacrifice that of what you think is good. And we're going to ask the Lord to give you what you need. Complaining, children of God. Stop murmuring. Holy Spirit is in this place. Come on. Signs and wonders follow the believer.
want you to listen with your spiritual ear. You know, the Bible always talks about those who have ears. Let them hear. And obviously, we all have ears. We just don't hear sometimes. We don't want to. And so I just want Mariana to sing those lyrics. And I want you to listen. I just want you to listen. And while you're listening, ask the Holy Spirit what is he saying to you. Be more love than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. Doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more love than I am right now. I'm going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. And you would cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Father, we thank you for the work that you have done today, God. We just declare and decree your goodness in our lives, Father. We just declare a new fire just starting in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives, God. So I thank you for all of the altar confessions, altar renewals, Father God, the restorations that are happening here in this place, in your house. And we just declare it done in the name of your gracious Son, Jesus. And everyone says, Amen. You guys may take your seat. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Amen. When we're